I gotta get out of the uh, little bit of wind here. Okay, I'm just gonna give you guys a heads up. I'm on my way to Seven Creeks, partially to uh, visit the clan. I need to see if everything's okay there. If you all can remember my last upload when I was down into the Min Patch, the Bigfoot Min Patch, there was all that traffic on this main road, right? And I found out, like it was like these these uh, big trucks were hauling equipment, and they uh, they supposedly I heard from a neighbor that they set up a rig down here in that area where I have the gifting site. So I need to go see what I'm gonna go be nosy. I'm going to go do a little bit of investigative research. I need to know if if they're right there near to the gifting site, I may have to move the bowl. And that's going to cause a lot of friction and I'm sure it's going to upset the clan. I don't think they will, but I have heard stories where if uh, like these oil leases and oil rigs and uh, construction companies and stuff get in there where there is... Uh, Bigfoot Sasquatch territory they do there is some things that go on right they might stand their ground and um, or as the majority of the time they just move out of the area they just they leave the area until everything goes calms down settles down and goes back to normal right so I need to find out what's going on there and things might change uh, that was why I was giving you guys a heads up I may have to move the bowl and we may have to maybe find another area in that location um, to set up the bowl away from the activity, right? The human activity. So I'm about halfway there. I'm on the road and I will see you in a little bit. is the oil rig set up and we're safe <laughs> we're safe this is where the rig is set it's about five miles from the gifting site so this is good oh my goodness I was kind of worried about this I was quite worried about it right so I zoomed in about a mile so I got to go about four miles back the way I came to the gifting site and kind of excited about getting to the gifting site uh, they might not be too happy about this because that's not far it's still like four or five miles from the where I'm always picking up the activity so we'll see what happens we'll see what happens hang tight see you in a bit okay so I did do a couple of whistles and I did a little walk west here of where I usually park just to listen and I had a bit of anxiety coming to Seven Creeks because I, I wasn't sure where they put up that rig right where they were gonna like it has been for a whole week it's been non-stop traffic here right I drove to it to see exactly whereabouts it is and we are a good five miles from that rig and off of the main road, right? If you if you were to head south from here, it's about four and a half miles and then another half mile west. It's a very beautiful place where they put that rig though. It's overlooking the river valley. Um, and I think it's an old well site. There is an old well site back in there from years back with the new technology and the new equipment and all that stuff. Now they might just go and reopen these these well sites, right? Uh, if that's something they do I'm not sure but anyway so that was that was kind of a relief but still it may be 
quiet until like I don't know how long they'll stay back in there I know they'll be in there now till after the road closure is over which is probably oh it'll probably be another two three weeks uh, they'll they'll be set up back in there so uh, at least it's not anywhere right near and close to the gifting site here at Seven Creeks and I think I hear walking I'm gonna do a few more loon calls. I did bring my smaller flute. I may play that back there once I get to the gifting site. I wanna to try to walk up into the hill, like further up in the hill. And there's a, really, there's a really nice spruce bluff up in there and just sit and play and see if, I feel bad for them because always interruptions, right? Always interference and, and uh, human interruptions. You know, it, all of these things and I understand the economy, I understand the jobs, right? It's good good jobs, there's just jobs there for a lot of people. But they do, most times they do not consider all the other stuff that's out here. And they don't understand it. Uh, to them, this is all for the taking, right? Even with these major, big, almost corporations, these farmers, these farmer groups like the Hutterite Colony, Mennonites, they're kind of colonized. And then you have these major, huge farmers, and uh, they're just destroying our woodlands. Like there, it's just it's got to at some point, you know, the government's got to step in. But I don't think they care much about stepping in either because they're it's all about that mighty dollar, right? But they don't really care that they're destroying our woodlands and all of these places for, for the wildlife, for Sasquatch, for all of them, all of the animals that that rely on these trees, right? And the waters and the muskegs, muskegs are supposed to be protected up here and I'm watching them being destroyed by these big farmers. It's sad, it's so sad and they're very, very important, those muskegs. And like I say, they're supposed to be protected up here in Alberta. That's what I've been told by a wildlife officer. So why, why is it happening then if they're actually protecting it, right? It's still happening. Um, it's another one of those, it's one of those things that just kind of get under my skin because um, they put these policies in place these laws but they never enforce them uh, people that care are just watching this happen and we have no power to stop it that's the frustrating that's the frustrating part of it all um, yeah so it's a different little bit different energy even within me today I wasn't sure what I was going to find <laughs> as I got closer I was just praying that it wasn't going to come up into this area where where my gifting site is and where I know the clan is I was just praying that it wasn't the case and sure I, I, so as soon as I got to as soon as I got here it was like a sigh of relief right it was a sigh of relief I want to come there it's almost like I want to come here and support the clan here through it all through it right because they're going to be stressed out there's going to be now in the two months in the month of May all these ranchers are going to be hauling the cattle into here and you have the oil rig going there's going to be a lot of traffic and um, we'll see what happens right time will tell we'll see how they they might be uh, telling me some stuff here today or in the you know in the uh, next few visits that I come here they may tell us they may complain uh, they may express their frustration hopefully there are no interruptions like I say there's been a lot of traffic here so uh, I'm going to do a few whistles and, and then we'll head up and check on the gifting site and um, leave them some gifts. I brought some goodies for them and then we'll take a little walk further up the hill. Uh, we'll be north or we'll be south and east of where the gifting site is just, just to go for a little walk and, and see if we can't see anything or maybe they'll come forward. Uh, I, they may be, uh, they may be staying out of and away from all this activity right but we'll see we'll see what happens
Okay. We got movement that way. And that is uh, where the Bigfoot totem pole is. Back in. I feel so relieved, but at the same time I feel, I still feel bad for them because of all the, usually normally on, I mean on the average, normally on a normal basis, it's quiet. There's no traffic, very few people come back down in this area and like I say, the roads in it is for the lease, right, the cattle lease, and the, here comes a vehicle. Gotta watch for that. It's gonna be tough, but we'll keep our head up and uh, let's go. Let's go to the gifting bowl. <clears throat> yeah, I can see the mud on my truck. Pretty muddy. The roads have been pretty muddy. I'm happy. All the. Uh, it's kind of nice, right? The temperature is very warm. Uh, I'm gonna keep my head up, my eyes open, keep your ears and your eyes open. Yeah, I want to film this a little closer. I only touched on this the last time I was here. I, I don't know in, if uh, in circumstances like this, uh, normally, again, on a normal basis and on a normal situation, They'll come one at least will come and let me know they're here and it may not happen because of all of the the uh, The busyness of the area the high energy, right? But I wanted to you see these these two breaks right here. I made those Right when I first set up the bowl to mark my trail my way in and I've talked about this in previous videos if you're ever in the trees and you have to walk through the trees a long distance Every 10, 20 feet, just break a twig, break a bit of a tree, mark your trail, and that's how you find your way out. You won't get lost that way, right? Uh, just do it. <laughs> my my uh, parents and my grandparents, they always said, mark your trail. Don't lose your way. There's always a way to find your way out. And that was what the native people used to, the Cree used to, the Cree used to mark their trails. Whoever was in the front broke the trail, right? And a lot of times the one that was in the back that was taken up the back also added to the markings. And they always, you can always find your way home. I made the breaks here to mark my way in. And I did a few breaks all the way to the gifting bowl. But I wanna, there's two pieces of tree that was placed in this spruce tree right next to my brakes which I found very interesting here I did these two brakes right here and and then you have a piece there and another one over there just laid into the into this spruce tree right next to my brakes right next to my brakes right here I don't know if anybody's around. Oh, it's very, very, very quiet. They may come after dark as well. And under the cover of darkness, right? A lot of people don't realize it's, it's a pretty steep hill coming up in here. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's so we're looking downhill here. Oh, bowl is still good. Bowl is still up. It is very packed right here, right? Look at this, just look at the area in front of the bowl. 
and you go over here it's just ground litter right underbrush and ground litter and we get to the bowl and I could swear there's been something laying right here right next to the tripod wow it is silent Silent, silent. Okay. Well, nothing in there. You know what? I'm gonna have to add some tie. This one come off. Two of them come off. Oh my goodness. Wonder if that looks that looks chewed. Okay, I gotta retie that while we're here. Alright. Hello? Hello? you I am worrying about you Misha 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 The air is very still. Very, very still. Um, I'm gonna face the camera over this way a little bit. Just keep your keep uh I hear something moving back in there, so I'm gonna start putting the bowl uh I'm going to start putting the gifts in the bowl. I'll be screen left. Uh, just watch down in there. See if... Keep your eyes open. And your ears open. Here we go. All right. All right, my friend. I 
I know you guys are probably stressed out. Uh, as humans, right? I know. Imagine you guys are stressed out. Um, I'm not even sure. I thought for a moment there I had a, I got the, the smell of them when I was on my way in. Right when I got to where I was filming the uh, those little those trees that were placed in the spruce tree over there at the opening where I first come into the 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 trees. Here. Okay, we got movement. First come into the 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 trees. Here. Okay, we got movement. Okay. I made it. Did you make it? guys got to be careful out here now with all that traffic all the traffic all the traffic Okay. Here we go. Here we go. I'm gonna have to bring some more ties. I think the uh, you know it could be squirrels, it could be mice. You never know. Chewing on that sinew that I used to tie the bowl. Uh, Cause normally that stuff will hold anything, right? It'll it's it will secure anything. Uh, it's very, very good uh, for binding or tying something that you want stayed tied, right? <laughs> but, of course, little mice and squirrels and rodents like that, they can chew through just about anything. Trust me, they can get in. They will get in. Um, okay, so we're going to take a little walk up the hill. I, they might wait till dark, right? come up in here there is a camp I noticed camp shacks back in there camping or trailers there's a camp set up in there so there's probably quite a few workers staying in here I don't know how their schedules if they got four in four off or or how they're setting up their their working schedule there but there's gonna be moments and times through the day where there's gonna be a lot of traffic here right and I think at night, uh, see, it's risky, right? It's risky for them because if they're so, if they're west, if they're south, they can just stay in the trees. Nobody will ever see them. Nobody will hear them. But if they're on the north end, they have to cross a road. Or if they're west of here, they'll have to cross the main road. And but I think they're smarter than that. I actually think 
they're in the north because that road that they have to cross isn't used it's it's just there's nothing at the end of it so there's no reason for anybody to go in there other than just if they're nosy and are out for a sunday drive or something in this way they could be they could come from miles away from the south right so to turn my back right in that direction three miles as the crow flies straight behind me where that boulder is the gifting stone or where i left the little bigfoot baby rattle where i caught the bigfoot little baby bigfoot blinking three miles as the crow flies straight behind me um and so quite quite a large area right quite a large area but we're just going to take a little walk i don't know i do i feel a little stressed for them and i i'm picking up anxiety and it may not be just mine. I've been finding myself having to take deep breaths. And that's not me. <laughs> that's, uh, that's not mine. Still be having anxiety just in, in anticipation of what I was going to find, right? So I'll figure it all out later. Man, that's a very deep. Sounds like props on that airplane. Like not a jet, right? Okay, let's go for a little walk. See what we're seeing again, and as well. I have to be watching out for our friendly little bears and grizzly bears. Um, I think they're moving around right now. There's no snow, it's warmed up. They're going to be coming out of the den, right? They'll be coming out, and I'm going to watch for that as well. I'm going to watch for them. We'll see. That mic, that external mic is pretty good. And, of course, as I mentioned in my last video, a lot of times they're talking when I'm talking, or they're moving when I'm moving, right? So, the nature... It is their nature. Okay. We did bring a, another battery. Uh, hopefully, these, uh, last time I was here, uh, three batteries. This is interesting. There's a break right there. No taller. Uh, it's about my eye. There's a few of those in here. No, same height, right? These aren't mine. These aren't my brakes. Another one right there. Right above my head. There's a whole bunch of these. Hmm, interesting. Those aren't mine. The only ones I to the gifting mode. Let's see. 